Venezuela. Venezuela. That's yeah. how I say it. I, that's probably how you should that's say it. That's how I said it Venezuela. Was <laughs> that's how the Spanish would say But I think in Latin America, they might not do the list. I know. And in fact, about halfway through my trip there, I realized that. And then I felt mm. like a sham. Yeah. Um, when we flew into Caracas. Did they uh, just assume you were Spanish, though? I think so, because they kept... And hate you as a colonialist and try and run you out on a rail? No, no, they've changed their opinion. They're no running out on rails. They actually, they wanted my uh, Spanish dollars. Really? Because when I went, I came, I went for the festival of the running out on the rails of people they don't oh, like. Oh, did you get so wasted? <laughs> I heard that's like, just like nine days of party. <laughs> totally, totally. And it's like, you know, so, you know, certain people are like slated to be run out on a rail, but then by like <laughs> the sixth day, they just, everyone forgets who it is. And they're just like, you know, random people are just getting run out. And like the mayor of the town got run out once. Right. It was and there's like bulls flying by. An- and anarchy. And like, yeah. You know, the thing about the running of out on the rails of the people in, Venezuela <laughs> is that even though it's like there's tons of people you always run into that like guy from college you know yeah. and you're like how did this happen we're I halfway know, across the world but it's like but he's passing you on a rail and he's being run out so you're just like hi bye I wish we yeah. could have caught up I know and you're like <laughs> where else but when you're in another country do you run into someone from your college and you're just like hey and then you see him on campus again you don't even stop because they're like flying by on a rail <laughs> but yeah and then the next time you see them you're like last time I saw you you were on a rail. Yeah, I know, and they're like all bruised and bandaged because it was like it was like I'm talking about Tomer. And they're like, yeah, that was the worst time of my life. I I nearly died. And you're like, I know, I know. so funny. And then you like play beer pong with them and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Is. Funny, like but anyway, that. so it sounds like I, you know, that was pretty exciting for me. What was the excitement on your trip? I did some amazing shopping, you guys. I got um, three purses that were made by um, by Venezuelan artisans. Um, I by, bought by native by like the native Indians, the tribes that were there, like not the descendants of the Spanish, but like by the, by the Maoris. Yes. So they're yes. from Venezuela, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, they, the, they escaped. The, Aborig- yeah. the Aborigine Venezuelans, actually. Yeah. I worried that my Western ways would put them off. But like I said right now, in this economy, they are more than happy to take my rupees. So um, I actually... What were the purses made of? Um, they were made of pig skin. One of them was, and one of them was so made of mohair. Leather, one of them was made as of... we call it in this country. Oh, I forget. I was there for <laughs> a week, and so now I speak with a Venezuelan accent. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Um, but the thing is, they use the entire part of the pig. The zipper is made out of an ear. Mm, yeah, they, the ear they almost literally A local made... special, I read that in the guidebook. Yeah, but... cochon de pig yeah. purse. Um, they, they almost literally made a silk purse out of a sow's ear, but they didn't. <laughs> it's, it's a leather purse with a pig ear. Right, because it's it was it's out of the male pig, so that so it's not a sow actually. It's a like bull pig ear or something. It's a pork purse. Yeah. All right. I now, guess. did did you barter? Like, was it a I market did. where you I did. barter? I traded. I traded. First, I went. I I uh, went to you know a money changing place, mm-hmm. Thomas Frank, and I got all my money turned into chickens. <laughs> so that I could more, more easily barter. Yes, and so then yes. I was I traded chickens for the purse. And it's too bad the the, the dollar exchange rate, the I dollar know. is so weak. You only get a couple of chickens a dollar. I, I heard it used to be like you know thirty chickens. It's like, you had yeah. to have them on leashes, but it's like highway robbery if you do it at the airport too. And that the thing is like I forgot and I got there and I opened my wallet and I had a bunch of chickens in there, <laughs> yeah. um, which explained the smell and the noise. Right. But I just I actually. I didn't want to take the time to do it at the airport, so I, right. I brought them back here, and I did it at the yeah. bank, and they charge you a fee. Even but I did I'm take a couple customer. back, even though you're not supposed to have foreign currency, just because the pygmy chickens they have for for bartering purposes. I just thought it would, they just look so cute because they're, they're small. They're like this, you know, the version, you know, and it's like the bonsai tree, but a chicken. And I just, I love, I wish our currency could be that. But, but like the something American, like the prairie dog. I mean, they're already small, but like imagine a mini little p- prairie dog, and you're like in your in your purse dog. satchel. Um, I also did that, and what I did is, don't tell anyone, but I took saran wrap and I wrapped the pygmy chicken in it, and then I put it in the bottom of a shampoo bottle. No questions asked. Yes. Uh, so you suffocated the chicken. No, because I 
I um, poked air holes in the shampoo bottle. It so made a mess. So you drowned it in shampoo. It's not sleeping. <laughs> it's a long flight. It's very sleepy. <laughs> it's very cold in there. Yes. Um, wow, all this um, talk, talk of Venezuela, Venezuela, and we never even have mentioned Hugo Chavez, or Hugo, or I don't even know how you say his name. I guess, um, you know, when you're a tourist there, his uh, his politics just really are kind of irrelevant to your experience. I'm the kind of person, I don't like to talk politics when I travel. I don't talk politics, I don't talk religion, I don't talk history, I don't talk math or science. I pretty much just talk about chickens and alcohol and purses and, um, I mean, sure, I'll have a fling, you know, when in Venezuela. Yeah. And so I'll talk about that kind of stuff, but I, did, I didn't I like to though. not talk at all. Um... Oh, you are a good listener. And just, you know, just go and um, and stare at people until they start telling me their life stories and about their family and the oppression um, of uh, the government and the Spanish and the West and imperialist powers like the United States. Uh, because some people, you know, people will just assume maybe I'm Canadian or whatever, well, and, like and that I'm not a party to it. Well, on your backpack, yeah, right? I did. You're supposed to, yeah. No, I actually I carried it in my teeth like a farmer, you know, who has like the wheat stalk, but I had a maple leaf just kind of hanging off my lips because I thought it'd make people comfortable and it would just make me seem folksy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had a maple leaf, but I didn't. I didn't have it. You know, so, like, in your face. You had I, a, you I had a wreath around your neck, right? Yeah, yes, but that was that was uh, fake. It was like a decoy. But I had an actual maple leaf, and I folded it up, and then I put it in my money belt in my bra under my clothes because mm. that's what I read you're supposed to do. And then I could walk around Las Ramblas, which is, uh, there's one in Venezuela as well as Spain, at, mm. late at night, and uh, people would rape me, but they wouldn't find my maple leaf. And maple leaf's not a euphemism. But... It wouldn't so they wouldn't like take your underwear off to rape you and find the maple leaf. I thought that they probably would find it in that case and then be like, "Whoa, like I just raped a Canadian. Awesome, that's even better than I thought." <laughs> it's, a, it's a dark story. Yes, this uh, one is. Um, <laughs> I was very, I was lucky that they raped me through my clothes, so the maple leaf was not armed but i was it uh it's taken yeah. a long time for me to be able to talk about it actually yeah and um maybe maybe we should have even waited a longer time cause maybe it was... because I, i'm scared i feel scared now and yeah I don't yeah know. um I'm but i'm glad the maple leaf was unharmed that's really what i was worried about in the story i was you had me going for a sec but i'm relieved now but you seemed concerned about the, the sleepy tiny chickens in the shampoo bottles as well I was worried about that. Uh, I was basically worried about everything except you. You're a humanitarian, Dustin. Yeah. It's amazing that we didn't run into well, each other I'm when just... we were there on the same teen tour. <laughs> uh, well, I was there on the PETA tour. That's why I really oh. I wasn't worried about any of the people, right. and, and also why I wasn't talking because I was also I was just communing with animals too. Right. And then I was there. Well, the second time I went back to take back the night. But yeah. you were not there. At no, time. I was taking back the Galapagos turtles while you were taking back the night. It's a very slow moving sort of. Oh no, it's that. quick because they're so slow. You can just snatch them. You can take them back right away because like where where are they gonna go? It's like all right, got gotcha, you, turtle. Does it make you feel like more of a man? No, it just makes me feel uh, swift. I mean, I'm faster than the turtle. I think that's cool. Sure. Yeah, it works. Whatever works. So anyway, um, Venezuela, whether you're, oh, yeah, um, you know, go. watching the rail riding or <laughs> wrangling turtles or pygmy chickens right, or getting raped, it's just a barrel well, of monkeys. You know, all avoid Las Ramblas in Venezuela would, would be my advice, actually. Unless you want to get raped. I mean, right. you know, whatever you want on your vacation, you're that's Right, up not to you. for us to judge. Yeah. It's you. But, you know, but Venezuela has it all, I think is what we're saying. Oh, yeah. Viva and, Venezuela, would and, you say? Mm, See, and then some. <laughs> it has it all plus more. <laughs>